I'm going to Cambodia and I wish to share the knowledge and skills that I have um, in the deaf community and, and share that in the country of Cambodia with the deaf people there. For me, being a deaf ed teacher, I was prepared by my students, my deaf ed students, my deaf cultural experience, because I had so many impactful people in my life that just allowed me to see that there's no boundaries to ability. I was inspired by a deaf community in Cambodia, and I felt that I had the skills and background to go and um, bring more of my experience and knowledge, but also learn so much more from that deaf community there. So I think I was inspired by having a deaf related mission, but also a Catholic mission in a sense, how I could bring them together. When I left college, um, I was a U.S. Peace Corps volunteer and I went to Kenya and I was so enthusiastic about um, doing a service. Um, I didn't really have the idea of mission in my head yet, um, but in my two years as a um, U.S. Peace Corps volunteer, I understood that it's more than service. It's engagement with the people that I was with. I learned so much from them. I semi-retired a year and a half ago. I was looking towards different mission possibilities. Um, I did some service when I was in college and when I was in high school, it was very short term. Um, you know, I'd go in for a week and then I'd leave. Um, and when I learned about Mary Knoll, it's a three and a half year commitment. And that was attractive because then you learn the language, you learn about the culture and the people there. You, um, you actually become a part of that community. It has that time so that you can make a difference. People that knew me um, and people I talked to, they thought it made sense for me to do it. I got really involved in social justice when I was in college, and so me doing all those projects, and it's social justice around the world and around the globe, it wasn't a surprise I was gonna do something like this. I've been influenced by Mary and all for um, pretty much my whole life. I had an aunt and uncle who were in Mary and all as a sister and father, and they served in Latin America for their entire careers. And in fact, I'm standing in front of my uncle's class picture from 1946. He's right here in the upper left. <clears throat> um, they're both deceased at this point, but they certainly had a great impact on influenced me to um, know about Mar Mary and all. I visited them in mission. It was something I really always wanted to do. I retired, the kids have grown up, so it seems like now is a good time to give this a try. So I really feel like um, I have to do this. I just can't not do this. It really was something I had a calling for, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to Haiti, um, and so I'm really excited because the missioners there, um, they live in community, and so community is something that I really value, and I'm really excited to have that support, um, to be able to, you know, always come back and have, you know, someone to talk to um, about my day while you know still living in the community. I'm going to Kenya, which will mean learning a new language and meeting a whole new culture, the African continent. I'm really excited about going to the birthplace of all humanity and to get to know the people, learn their language, their culture. And then the stories we hear here at Mary Knoll from other um, lay missioners, fathers, sisters, brothers who have served in that area um, have really inspired me to get excited and look forward to this. I just wanted to contribute to the justice and peace in the world, especially now more than ever. I feel the world is divisive and I wanted to be part of engaging and connecting and working with people to maybe assist them. And of course, I know I'm being assisted also and to follow in the gospel messages of we are our brother and our sister's keepers. One of the things uh, that really attracts me in this era is, is, the, is where we are with mission. Uh, we studied during our orientation program the history of mission and um, where the church is now with mission it really appeals to me. Where we're just walking with the people and learning from them 
and learning what they need before we take any action, that kind of thing. With the option for the poor, I'm really happy to be a part of that. That's the challenge, is can I see the face of Christ in everyone I meet? My hope for mission is to use my talents and skills, but also be a person that listens to where I'm needed. I think God saw that I have these gifts and talents, and maybe I thought that that was my capacity and that's where I was supposed to be. But he's definitely pushing me outside of my comfort zone. My biggest hope and desire is that I really will be able to impact or contribute to someone else's giving them voice or alleviating some of their um, difficulties. Uh, it, it is my hope, even if I just touch one, two, or as many people as I can, of course, um, that I can connect with them and contribute to them in some way. My hope for mission is to make a difference in people's lives, um, but also, and this might seem selfish, um, is to change myself. Um, I want to be able to grow in compassion for other people um, and, you know, in that way, be able to connect with people around the world um, and at the same time, make a difference in their lives and encourage them um, so that they can also change themselves and empower themselves. And my hope is just to uh, just spend some time with the Kenyan people and, and share their faith to get to know them and, and their understanding of God um, and to, to be present with them and, and, share, and also to share what I learned there with the people here. I, I'm sure I can do nothing but grow in faith through this process.